What's up guys, I'm Clint Flairwood, welcome back to another Division 2 build video and today I'm bringing you my pyro build for PvE. Um, I've cranked this up a notch, been super tanky now in PvE and dealing some crazy damage and been an awesome healer, not to mention I'm using the Pyromaniac AR which is crazy. It deals some crazy insane damage and it's something I fully, thoroughly recommend if you like, you like me, you like to see things burn and they will in abundance with this build. The weapon, the Pyromaniac, is fantastic. It really is. After two kills you will proc the talent which is the primary talent perfectly ignited whereas the next enemy will burn and that will give you that extra 40% weapon damage. That's crazy, but I've gone all in, and that's I want to see burn all the time. So I'm just delivering so much burn on this build. It is mental. If you want to opt with a different skill, maybe the Hive Stinger, then so be it. I've opted for as much burn as possible and some crazy heals on this build. So I can tank and tank effectively as well. So guys, enough of the jibber jabber. Take a look at my Pyromaniac HBK. Yes, sweet chin burn music build for PvE. Let's do this. What's up, guys? Yes, I'm Clint Flair. We're back once again, like the Renegade Master, with another Division 2 build, and I'm bringing more burn than ever with this build. This is mental. I've been using this for weeks now, and I had to get to a point where I had to perfect it to get it really good and viable to show you guys, just to see what you guys think, but I'm loving this build. It is crazy, you, you are keep walking any PV content, uh, you're super strong, you've got that element of being tanky, and yes, 3k skill power, and not the technician, also known as the nerf gun specialization. This is all about the survivalist. So it's not just a great solo build, it's a great team build, because you're consistently buffing your teammates with, yes, those status effects but guys take a look at this build this is my sweet chin burn music build for pve now guys i'm rolling yes with the survivalist specialization and that being said i'm using that because i like the extra status effect damage uh, for my teammates i like that little bit of skill haste as well and the survivalist and the crossbow it does really synergize well with this build now, you don't have to roll with the Survivalist, you can roll with the Technician if you so desire, or the Demolitionist, that is entirely up to you. This build is my blueprint, it's my template, and a really good one of that. So, let's take a look at this. Okay guys, yes, it is Survivalist, I'm rolling with 3, 9, 8, which is 3 offensive, 9 defensive, 8 utility stats. My primary weapon is the Pyromaniac, yes, this beast of an AR. Now, it has the talents perfectly ignited, which is deal plus 40% weapon damage to burning enemies. After two kills, applies burning to the next enemy you hit. Now, the way I've set this build up about is, again, using a burning skill, the burning status effect skill, uh, that deals some crazy damage. And again, we'll proc that status effect and also proc the BTSU gloves to deal more damage through my skills. Uh, and then the 40% from ignited, or sorry, perfectly ignited, is active more often. That's what I've opted for this particular weapon and the skills, which we'll talk about those very shortly. Allegro, which is 10% rate of fire. I think that's just a no-brain on this build. Allegro is needed. Stop, drop, and roll. Well-equipped, rolling, removes, burning, bleed, and poison status effects. Can occur once every 60 seconds. And in terms of the mods I'm rolling with this build, these accuracy, rounds, critical chance, and damage to elites. My secondary is the Merciless. And I'm rolling with this because of the holster talent and the holster talent alone. And that is brutality. Well holstered, landing the shot has a 5% chance to deal 100% damage as explosive damage. Which is great. It really is great. If you spec into explosive damage, you'll get some really, really strong damage through your primary weapon. Now, I haven't for that. It, this is just a nice to have on the build. And again, that extra 100% damage does come in really handy when you most need it. And these are the fixed mods for this weapon. Accuracy, reload speed, weapon handling, and stability. 
Now, my sidearm is the survivalist sidearm, which is the D50. Um, it has been dictive, rooted, and transmission. I'm using rooted, yes, for the extra skill damage. Um, and transmission, while well holstered, shock applied to the agent, transfers to an enemy within 10 meters, can occur once every 60 seconds. With this, you will not get shocked, which is a good thing. And accuracy is the mod of choice. Now, if we want to look at the weapons, let's take a look at the stats. So my primary damage is 15.6k on my Pyromaniac AR, uh, 935 RPM, which is nice, uh, 342.8k armor, which is good for, for a 3k skill build, that's really strong, and 56.1k health, 2977 skill power, which unlocks all the mods that I have in the game. So yes... This works perfectly well, and that's the most effective you will get this build. Get it to 3k skill power, you're laughing all the way to the bank. With this, there's no cheesy vendor items. There's no uh, nothing like that that I've bought from a vendor that, again, has stupid armor here, there, and everywhere. This is just how I've got the, the build synergized. Now, we'll go for the mask. The mask is... Fenris Group AB mask, which is 10% assault rifle damage. So if you can shoehorn this in on your build, it's nice because that 10% AR damage comes in very, very handy. And with the talents and attributes, you can see how they perfectly roll for me in the build. So 52% damage to elites, 6% critic chance, and 25% damage to elites. So the 77% just there, not to mention the 5% on my Pyromaniac, that's 82% damage to elites. This obviously could be higher. However, this is the best that I have as it stands, and it works perfectly as is. Now, in terms of the chest piece, the chest piece is an Alps Summon Armament chest piece. This could be anything. This is entirely up to you. I'm using this because I need something on this build to make this build work strong, and that is that huge, huge, huge amount of armor of 18.5%. That, that comes in really handy. Uh, skill power 945 and capacitive, which is 50% skill duration. Now, the mods, armor, explosive resistance, protection from elites. Skill power, increased disrupt duration and burn duration, so burn damage. Uh, and again, armor, explosive resistance and protection from elites. So that's 20% explosive resistance, which comes in very handy um, against grenades, especially and it's great in PvP with Negotiator's Cheese Dilemma. Now, in terms of the holster, the holster is the third piece of Alp Summer Armament, which is skill power, and the talent Precise, which is 15% headshot damage. By all means, you could go a Destructive for the 40% damage, which is good, but I've opted for a bit of extra damage on this. Now, you could go down the route of Devastating to get that 5% Weapon damage, but I've opted for precise to try and be as accurate as possible on this build. I try and go in cover where, where I can and aim for the heads to pop those heads for sure. That's what I've opted for precise. If you're a good aim, this is a great talent in PvE. The mods, utility, which is skill power, burn damage, burn duration, uh, weapon damage, AR damage, and marksman rifle damage. And I'm using this piece because it gives me two mods. I don't want to use a gear set piece. I want to use something with a talent, i.e. headshot damage and a nice chunk of skill power as well. So I'm using this Alp Summon, Summon Armament holster because, again, I need that two mods to get the extra 4% damage from my AR. Now, the knee pads. The knee pads are the Gila Guard brand set, which is 5% total armor. 12% um, total armor as the attribute and empowered. And it's key on the build somewhere you have empowered because that will give you 20% skill power. That's something, again, to think long and hard about because I need my skill power at 3k to unlock the mods that I need and have some techy attributes that can go into either uh, DPS or armor. So it's entirely up to you, but I've opted for armor, get my... Um, armor way above three three hundred thousand, so then I could utilize a little bit more into uh, skill damage. Now armor, explosive resistance, total armor, and armor, explosive resistance, total armor. Now the BTSU gloves. Now everyone knows what these are. Um, I'm rolling with these because I want the extra skill damage and skill duration, etc., etc. Skill healing and repair. Now with this. 
you look at it again while infused you gain 10 percent skill damage which is from my primary skill 10 percent skill healing and repair which is on my seek and mine and 10 percent skill duration for each utility stat that you have so that 10 percent skill duration yes is going off my utility stats i have eight so that's 80 percent skill duration 80 percent skill damage and 80 percent skill healing and repair so that's why i'm using the btsu gloves i feel it pays dividends to use these on this build the mods skill power burn damage bleed damage skill power bleed damage burn damage and armor explosive resistance and total armor you can see there's a trend in terms of the explosive resistance on the build and i'm using that solely because yes there's no hazard protection on this build um if you do go into pvp i will show you an alternative what i would do is i would switch out your mask for this piece which is again gila guard if i attach two that's 20 percent hazard protection there's 50 percent hazard protection on the attribute and insulated so that's 100 percent hazard protection on this build so when i go into pvp and use this against players then yes dz conflict this is how i roll i would switch this for this my current AR piece for this, I'm doing less damage, but there's so much damage which we mitigated from hazard protection, I can live with that. Again, you can have some extra burn damage on there if need be as well. Now, the backpack is the Alps from Armament. Yes, the third piece that I have. You don't have to have Alps. It's just how the build fits for me. You can roll whatever you want to roll with. It's not a problem. So, it's health and armor. Now, I haven't re-rolled these because I've re-rolled the last talent. So, perfect tech support. Kills by active skills and that explosives grant plus 30% skill damage for 10 seconds. And again, this is proccing all the time because of my primary skill. Just shreds. You need six or more utility for that. I have eight. And harden for extra 15% armor, which is key to get me way above 300k. Uh, some burn damage and more burn damage and reload speed as my mods. Now we've seen the weapons, we've looked at the gear, let's take a look at the skills. My primary skill is the Firestarter, Chem Launcher. Um, 8 ammo, which is nice. 17.6 second cooldown. There's no skill haste I've seen on the build at all, so to get that 3k skill power, I would struggle to get a lot of skill haste because I expect more into armor uh, and obviously critic chance and, and damage to elites on the build, so... You really can't have it all, unfortunately. So I've gone for, again, the skill power to get me where I need to be. Now, my damage 190,000. My burn damage is 12,000. Burn duration is 6 seconds. And PvP damage 95,474. PvP burn is 6,000. The mods, which is ammo and damage. I don't have a burn damage mod. Apparently, there is one of burn strength. I don't have one. Um, if you did have one, this may pay dividends on the build. And my healing seeker mine. This has a 19 second cooldown, 450 second duration, health of 39, sorry, 38k, my healing of 55k, my PvP healing 27k. So with this, you can only use the Mender Seeker Mine on the Survivalist Specialization. That's why I'm opted for this one. This heal is the best. I feel in any heal that you can have in the game it is real, real good as it stands. The mods I have some nice mods. Skill Haste, 2936. I have 90.5% healing, which is 2715. And this sexy one, which is 2959, 98.6% healing that's awesome that puts me such in a good place to again receive some really really good heals on this build seeker mine the mender mine is really really strong just so you know test it in pve it's great pvp it's also super strong especially with 3k skill power you're gonna rock and roll with this all day long okay we'll take a look at the stats the stats now we know what the weapon talents are um 11 crit chance 25% crit damage, headshot damage is 70%. Again, try and aim for the headshots because they will be absolutely murked in no time. Reload time of 2.2 seconds. Uh, accuracy is 10%. Uh, all weapons damage bonus 1.5%. And then my AR damage is 29%. LMG 15. Again, that's just again part of the survival specialization. 82% damage to elites. 
and then we have the my explosive resistance is 31.2 percent and that helps me a lot when it comes to negotiators dilemma builds uh, when you do take them down they will pop that grenade and yeah, so that will mitigate some of that damage. A 19% protection from elites, which is really good. Don't get me wrong, this could be higher. I'm using this again in PvE to PvE build. So this 19% does mitigate some damage. The 31% will mitigate a lot of explosive damage as well for grenades. So yeah, it does work very nicely. And as you can see, my skill haste is only 20%, and that's from Alps. That is it. It's not great. In all fairness, this could be better, but I gain a bit for more skill power to get my mods dealing me all the damage that I need on this build. But guys, this is it. This is my build. I'll show you briefly in the range in terms of what damage you can do. Um, and we'll just take a look at the Mender Mine as well. So let's just do a bit of this. Let's damage myself. Yep, nearly brown bread. So let's just pop the Seeker Mine. Now just take a look at this. There you go. You can see how strong, how strong the Seeker Mine is. Now let's just go back. This one, damage self. Yeah, yeah, get it. Now you can see I'm fighting it. Now let's get back in the cover. Nice splash of health. Yes, boy, I'll take that all day long. Now we'll take a look at how strong this is. These NPCs. And that will proc, obviously, tech support. Or should, should I say perfect tech support? And precise. You see, it, it, it works. It synergizes really, really well. I really like this build. It's something I've been using solo, in a group, and I've been loving it. Really have. I get some really nice damage on the fire starter, not to mention... The Seeker Mender Mine, as you've seen, does heal me in no time. It's that, that good. So even with low skill power, and I've seen some low skill power builds with the Mender Mine, and it works a treat. So 3k skill power, you're laughing all the way to the armor bank. Simple as that. But guys, yeah, this is my HBK switching Burr Music build for PvE. Loving it. And again, there's that iteration where we change the mask for the hazard protection mask and get into pvp and you've got a good build again but guys let me know what you think in the comment section if you enjoyed the video drop a like and if you want to see more division 2 content smash the sub button and i'll see you in the next one peace